what I'm using here. I'm using a Berkeley Havoc grub in a uh, green pumpkin with blue and green glitter. It's a three inch bait, a bead and a free weight or a bomb, swivel bomb. They're a nice big eye instead of a Texas weight. This is a new rig that's going around. I've been using it for a little bit. Um, so I'd show you it today. It's got a lot more movement than the uh, Texas rig, that's why it's called a free rig because as you can see that bomb weight really slides along beautifully you've got to have one with a big eye because it won't go over your leather knot house don't get these tiny eyes and it's better with a swivel bomb in because that prevents tangles but the idea is if you sink this on a slack line it will shoot down before the lure and leave the lure trailing behind straight down rather than towards you with a Texas rig because of the shape of the weight and the friction on the weight. Well, that's a theory. And then the bait, there'll be more distance between the weight and the bait by the time it hits a bomb. And uh, the bait will flutter down more naturally. You can fish it up tight. Some people put a stop behind it for a Jika rig, but I find that catches on my knot, so I don't do that at the moment. Got to come up with a different solution for that. And um, yeah, it's a versatile rig, so you can tap it and hop it like a Jika rig along the bottom on a tight line or you can let that weight sink and give your bait a bit more free movement I've been doing a bit of both to be honest depends what the fish want on the day uh, and I've got that on my traditional brass set up so I've got my Magecraft cross stage hard rock special CRX 802 MHS 8 foot Lures 5 to 30 gram, lines 0.8 PE to 2 PE. Beautiful rod, I've been using this for a few weeks now. Loving it, had a couple of fish on it. But it's that time of year, there's not a hell of a lot of fish around. Got my Pen Slammer 3, 3,500 on there with 20 pound braid. 15 pound uh, Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. Um, I'm getting very wet at the moment. So, recording, we're going out that way. Twonk is where I've had success of late with the wrasse so I'm out in the worst of weather so I could have slunk that on a slack line um, to, to separate the bait from the weight uh, I forgot I'm just going to tap it traditionally now but I've got those flappers so I need to pull a bit so with the free rig if you lift like that It'll go up and then the weight will sink quicker than the bait and give you a bit more separation. Well, that's that's the idea. You'll get it with a Texas rig. But I know it's quite snaggy there, so I'm going to keep just dragging it tentatively. And let's see if someone's going to have a go. Good little baits, these Havoc grubs. I haven't used them in quite a while. But, I mean, if you can pick up Berkeley Havoc baits, they're all good baits. I am getting soaked. This really was not forecast today. So it's annoying me. Come on, fish. We'll cycle through a few baits. There is ras here. Not a ton of fish right where I am, there's more around further. But I can't get to that because we've got wet rocks. I'm on my own and the tide's a bit high to do it. I've done better just here at the minute. So. Just short little pools to get those flappers going. Got a wonderful scent in them, the Havoc baits. All Berkeley baits do, like your gulp, etc. Um, I find I have a lot more feel with the, um, oh there's a thump, that was a bite there then, with the free weight, come on, didn't feel like a big fish, but it's definitely a fish, come on have it, one thump. Oh, that's probably out of the way now, I've got one that's interested over there, doesn't feel big though. Yeah, I have a lot more feel with that weight, the shape of the weight, just tapping on the bottom, but at a point rather than, oh there's a bite again, rather than it. Yeah, got one. 
Yeah, don't go too bad, it's not a huge fish, but he's got a ras. Yeah, he's only a little guy, but it's a ras. All right, let's get the net, safely land this fish. So we're doing okay. <coughs> Thought he was small. There we go, we can get the net right down to him. There we go. I don't know how much of that you would have got. All right, don't lift the net straight up at you. She might break it. I've never broke this one, but you pull it towards you when you've got it on the full length and it'll lift up. Even a five pound rats. Let's be careful with him. Keep him within the net. So look, that free rig, that free rig, we're at the treat there. He's up just in the top of the lip. Let's put that away. Show you that beautiful rass. There, little stunner, isn't he? Little bone model, a little bit of blues coming on his fins and that. Nice fish. Have a little look before I put him back. So I'm not going near the water's edge. I'm too far up, so he's going back with my long net. That's why I use it. Saves you rod tip, makes you safer, better for the fish. Can't emphasize enough. Get yourself one of these rock fish, uh, a rock fish landing nets. If not, just probably do some nice ones of the freestyle. Try and get this fish going. He's gone into there. He goes. There he goes. One happy chappy. One February ras. There. So a lovely uh, little ras on this little um, Berkeley Havoc grub that I picked up really cheap at Osborne and Crag in Plymouth last summer. Um, Havoc baits. They don't make them anymore. Um, they're one of my favourites. Uh, Berkeley baits have a scent in them. This is a beautiful action. You can see it's like a little Senko body with a couple of flappers there. And the colour, Ras love this sort of colour with the blues and greens in it. And uh, on the free rig. So I'm getting a few fish on this free rig now. And you do seem to get a good amount of feel. And I thought it would suit this sort of bait because I'd get a bit of separation and then let it flutter a bit and then pull and then get those uh, appendages there, the little flappers there of the grub working. All right, I'm going to go with a uh, two gram or there or thereabouts. Curb, I think. For my um, first rig. Yeah, if you haven't seen that before, the handy little weight storage box, you put a few hooks in and rings and different weights and beads. Great little things. Push the button, pops up, waterproof seal. Uh, only just got this, trying it out. Um, if you're into tungsten, you can get it fully loaded um, from a chap called Dan Sales. Um, who's 97 tungsten, I think it is. I've filled it with lead here because we're, we're sea fishing and I'm not going to use the tungsten in the, the sea. It's a bit too expensive for me, but if you do your perch fishing in that, great little thing. Ninja 2500 LT on a Major Craft Sol Paro. Aging uh, game SPX T702 AJI tubular model, seven foot, lures between 0.6 and 10 grams, so quite a good range there. That's why I picked this rod. And um, line rates one to five pound, braids a bit different 0.1 to 0.6 PE. This is a little bit over that, but it feels good in the rod anyway. It gives me a bit of security in case I look something reasonable. All right, got a little bit of power ice on red. The ragworm there, um, right chill on the chap. Same as before, go back through the same ground. How long that's going to stay on there, I don't know. All right, take it easy because everything's soaking wet again now. Let's try. Let's try over there because I think there's a fish over there for sure. Alright, put the rod out this way. I'm fishing over that way. This is a ledge and I've gone up tight against it. I don't want my braid rubbing up against it. Any more than it has to. A bit of weight there then, maybe there's a bit of weed. Oh, I don't know. I've got something. I've got a fish. I've got a fishy. I've got my first LRF fish. Let's swing it up then, it looks like. 
That's a pollock, is it? Yes. I caught my first Adderai fish. There you go. On ISO. On a little chair. Make sure I'm filming. Yeah. Look at the beautiful colours on that fish. Oop. Let's not drop it. Beautiful coloured little fish. Spots. Purples. Golds. Browns. Duh. Yep. Happy with that.